Simon in Burnmouth, England. It sounds awful, but it's not. It's spelled B-O-U-R-N-E, so it's not B-U-R-N. Burn your mouth, England. So, and and uh, Burnmouth probably is the way they would say it. So, forgive me if I have butchered the name of your city. <clears throat> he says, I wondered if you could explain to me how the music placement is created when it's recorded. I can understand placement from left to right due to the channel balance, and I understand that sounds out of phase can be behind me or make a giant hole, but how is depth achieved, and how is it achieved in the recording? Is this an audio illusion that is created? It would be great if you could help explain how this works. Well, I can give you a brief explanation of some of it. In its simplest form, depth in a decent recording has a lot to do with <clears throat> how far away the singer or the person or the instrument is from the microphone. So if I pull, if I, if I take a microphone and let's say I'm strumming guitar, and you better hope I'm not, because <laughs> I can't play. But if, if I'm strumming a guitar and the microphone's right here, there won't be much depth, and for good reason, because we have the close proximity effect where the, the, the sound which needs space to come out and propagate properly, as opposed to being really close where we're picking up, I mean, th well, here's an easier way to think about it. Try it for yourself. If you can get near a guitar, put your ear next to the guitar and listen to it being strummed, and then pull back a little ways and listen to it. It's a very different experience, very different. One has depth, one has the the body of the instrument and the strings properly mixed together as the instrument was intended to be listened to. And this depth business, as I walk farther away, now you don't hear it because my microphone's attached to me, but if, if the microphone was here and I'm walking farther away, you'll start to get more of the room, you'll start to get less of my direct sound, and we interpret that as depth, as a distance from the microphone. And that's the simplest explanation I can give you. And we do it all the time at Octave Records in our recordings. Now, there are other ways that music in a recording can be manipulated. And, and we'll cover that in a future Ask Paul because I think that's really important. And one of the things that we've learned, that I've learned, is that the mix how things are mixed, whether or not it, yeah, of course, as you brought up, there's in the left channel, in the right channel, in the center channel, but more than that, there, there, there's a whole plethora of devices and tricks and things that we can do in the mix to give it the illusion of, of depth, of space between instruments. And, and, there's, and we'll go through a lot of that, maybe specifically. I intend, as we get more and more into octave records, that we'll start a series of teaching people how these recordings are made. Or not teaching is probably the wrong word. It, it sharing with you how these recordings are made, because it's fascinating. And, and in the recording process, if we want to have good space and good depth, we keep people away from the microphones, or we do another trick, which is put it close and put it far away, and then just the careful blending of those two channels really gives you presence and depth. So that, that's the simplest way I can tell you, but we will be sharing our techniques and doing some videos of the recordings and so you can see how it actually happens. And then you buy the recording and you listen to it and you go, oh, that's what they did. That's cool. And you can see how all that's made. So look forward to that. And that's at Octave Records, octaverecords.com. Just www. Look her up. Okay. Thanks for the question. <laughs> I'll talk to you later.